Okay, as my porpoise proposal of my theory, the good vibrations, suggests that, as I've shown in this in videos prior on this channel, that all the planets are connected to each other, and we know that all the planets are connected to the sun, because we all orbit the sun. And it's gravitational, but I say it's also magnetic and electromagnetic. There is a connection definitely between the planets and the sun, as well as each other. Okay, let's say this is the sun. These are the, the yellow is the gases around the sun. And they're rotating. Never mind that black spot. That's just a problem in my uh, cover here. But we're going to take the top half of the gases off the sun, okay? That's just the gases. And inside is the core, like I showed you, with this weird magnetized ferrite core. It's inside there, okay? So I'll set this back here. That's what this represents, is that. And I've got it colored the same, if you watch when it goes around. And right here, the gases are spinning because of the magnetic field of the core of the sun. They're spinning with it to a certain degree. And in this particular situation, I'm showing the core spinning at the same speed as the gases. But that's not what's going on, and I'll show you why. So the gases are spinning, and it's causing the core to spin. But that's not what happens in reality in our solar system. Because what's happening are the planets... All the planets also have magnetic cores, and they're causing what I call magnetic breaking, or what we know is magnetic breaking, or gravitational and electromagnetic, but it's breaking. Let's say one of these is Saturn, and one of them is Jupiter. Either one is which. They are the main contributors to the magnetic breaking. What they do is stop the core. If you see, the core is now not spinning okay but if I back them off a little it'll spin at a certain speed it's like a magnetic slip gear like a clutch but I'm showing you here that's how it works if you see that the core does not spin because these two are magnetically breaking it to a certain extent and that's why the earth sees what it sees as how the core turns for the for the uh, solar cycle all the planets uh, contribute to the magnetic breaking but i think saturn jupiter and even uranus and neptune are some of the major contributors of how the solar cycle happens because as saturn comes around and is leaned it forces the core to tilt or push sideways it doesn't tilt so much as you have a repulsion pressure or an attraction pressure, if you see that. And it makes the core of the sun go from side to side, like away from repulsion or towards with attraction. And that's what causes the core to be closer to the gases on one side or the other, which causes the heavy cycles, heavy part of the cycle. Then, when these two planets are more out away from each other, the cycle changes. And when they're lined up with each other, just a moment. When they're lined up with each other like this, it changes the cycle. It depends on their position around the sun. Okay, that's what causes the solar cycles magnetic breaking okay i'm going to use this child's toy of the solar system which it's not right the the sizes are wrong the orbits are wrong and all that but that's not the point of this the point of this is to show how the solar cycle works and how we see what the sun does during the solar cycle so the point of this is not that this is right okay so we'll move on to showing you how my theory says the solar cycle, well, the solar system, but in this particular video, the solar cycle works.
and we'll do that. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is take off the top half of the gases of the sun. And now we see the core, what my theory says is the solid, spherical, magnetized core of the sun. And as I showed in my last video, the core is magnetized in a funky way. And if you've seen that, you'll understand what this is. But as the Earth goes around, so we time the solar cycle in Earth days, Earth years, and so forth. So if the core was sitting still, we would see the flip of the poles every six months. But that's not what happens. The poles flip every 11 years. So let me do this. Turn this off. And what I'm going to do now is hook the sun's core because the gases rotate around the core because of the magnetized magnetic field of the core. That's why they rotate every 25 days around the equator and 30 days or so around the poles. But at this situation, let me turn it back on, the core is going to turn pretty much with the Earth but it slips a little, if you notice. We see the same basic pole of the core, which is south on top, north on the bottom, as the Earth goes around. But every 11 years, that flips. And if I've showed you how the poles are situated on the sun, if you saw my last video, on the magnetic, the odd magnetic field of the sun, See how the, the Earth is slowly getting ahead of the rotation of the core. If you see that, it's slowly but surely turning faster than the core is turning. That's what's going on in our solar system. And eventually, we're going to see the other side of the sun from where we started a while ago. But the reason that we see it that way in our years, in our time, as we face the sun and take measurements and readings, is because of magnetic breaking, magnetic drag. I've always, my theory proposes all the planets are electromagnetically, magnetically, and gravitationally connected. And we know they're all connected to the sun because they all orbit the sun. There's a connection there. Whether it's gravitational, solely, magnetic, or electrical, electromagnetic, and I think it's all three. Gravitational, electromagnetic, and magnetic. If you notice by now, we're getting out of the south and heading into the north. Right now, we're seeing a, a maximum solar cycle from the Earth. We're seeing the red come down. Okay? Just keep watching. It'll eventually move around. So, it's been almost 11 years. We're almost across from where the blue was coming down. Because the core is not turning at the same speed as we orbit it. It's turning slower, so we're actually orbiting faster than the core is rotating. The reason that is, is because all of the planets are magnetically breaking or magnetically dragging the core from rotating at the speed the gases do. The gases are trying to turn the core at their speed, but all these magnets, huge electromagnets, especially the inner four planets and uh, Jupiter and Saturn, are putting drag on it. It's a magnet to magnet, magnet to magnet, magnet to magnet, or electromagnet to electromagnet. They are both, and gravitational. It's all configured in together. This is difficult to figure out who's doing what to cause this to happen at this each individual speed of orbit and rotation, but it's a slip gear. It's like a clutch. So the Earth is getting closer and closer now to being completely opposite. So there's a little more drag going on. If you see, and I can drag it back a little farther yet. The Earth is coming around to the north side, being the uh, dominant on the north, north hemisphere. And if you drag it back, it'll get farther and farther. But this is a slip gear. It's continuous and constant. But it changes, and that depends on the pole of Uranus 
and the pole of Saturn when they're pointing towards uh, the sun and when they're pointing away from the sun and which pole is pointing towards for those two planets. Jupiter could be an intermediate play in that. And like I said, this is not orbiting at the speeds it should. The inner four run at the same speeds on this toy, and the outer four run at the same speeds. Those are the two different speeds on this toy. But since each planet is orbiting at a different speed, the gravitational or magnetic braking happens differently throughout the, the cycle because the planets get closer and nearer to each other on the sides of the sun because Jupiter catches Saturn and passes it as it orbits. It orbits faster. And these two, uh, Jupiter and Saturn, orbit faster than Uranus. So there's always a changing magnetic angle of braking, magnetic power of braking. But it's basically cut into two 11-year cycles. In other words, every 22 years we start over, basically. But there's a little difference in the angles of everything. My pole came off, my rod. But that's what's going on. As the Earth orbits, the, the core is not orbiting at the same speed that the Earth orbits it. It's, it's a little slower. It's got drag from the other planets stopping the core from spinning at the speed that the gases rotating want it to try to make it or, or rotate. It's got drag holding it back. That's the main part of why we see the poles flip every 11 years. It takes 22 years for us to go completely around it. It's like if I take this off, we would see the poles flip every year, okay? Because the core is sitting still. But if I put the drag on it, we will see the poles flip much slower. If you see, there's drag now. But it's not just the Earth causing the drag. It's all the planets, especially the inner six. They cause the core to be held back from the gases trying to make it spin fast. So that's what causes the flip of the poles during the solar cycle. That's why it's approximately 11, 11 years. And the reason the 11 years fluctuates is because of the positions of the planets. The positions mainly of the ones that have major tilts putting more magnetic braking at times and less magnetic braking at times, depending on the angle of their tilts towards the core. 